When I was in college, I went on a two-month mission trip to Turkey. Now, my team's primary objective when we were there was to share the gospel with Turkish college students. And I remember the morning when we left, our flight took off from O'Hare, so that meant first we had to take this really long car ride from Ann Arbor to Chicago. So what we did is we rented this giant bus for the whole team, and we got up at what felt like the middle of the night, and we boarded this bus. And what I remember most about the morning was the mood on the bus. So half of the people were still asleep, but for the rest of us who weren't, we found ourselves in sort of a contemplative kind of state. Now, most of us had never been that far from home before. Now, we had really become comfortable with sharing the gospel locally on our campus at home, but never abroad like this, and never consecutively day after day for two months. So we were all kind of imagining what it would be like to strike up conversations with Turkish college students about spiritual things. You know, what would they say back to us? How would it make us feel? It's like we were mentally preparing for this mission trip that we knew was going to start the moment we sat down on Turkish soil. But in the meantime, it's just sort of like an intermediate state here on this bus. Well, at some point during the ride, I remember snapping out of this super contemplative state and finding that my friend John Smiley was missing. Now, John had started the bus ride in the seat just across the aisle from me, but all of a sudden I looked up and he was gone. So I started kind of asking the people around me, Hey, where's John? Hey, have you seen John? Well, it took us a few seconds to find him. Do you want to know where John was? John Smiley was in the very front of the bus, in the total darkness, sharing the gospel with the bus driver. <laughs> and that's when, it, that's when it hit me that John Smiley was thinking on a whole different level than the rest of us on this mission trip. Now let me explain what I mean. For most of us, the bus where we were sitting was kind of like an intermediate state, like a time in between where we have the comforts of home on one side, and then at this future date, we have this mission trip, this, this fruitful and productive mission that was getting ready to start. But right now, I mean, we're confined on a bus, so we're just waiting. For John Smiley, the bus was the place for ministry. It was the ideal place for articulating the gospel to people who need to hear it. And while the rest of us were thinking deeply about conversations we would be having with, with Muslims at some future date, halfway across the world, my friend John was busy thinking about the spiritual needs of a bus driver from Ann Arbor who was sitting literally six seats in front of me. It's almost like the rest of us were, you know, like, like doing our stretches in the locker room, getting ready to go in the game. John Smiley was already in the game. Let me read a scripture to you. It's Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. When the Apostle Paul said these words, he was under house arrest without physical access to the people he wanted to be ministering to. Sounds familiar, right? It was kind of an in-between state in his ministry. But what I want you to notice is how his attitude is remarkably similar to that attitude I saw from John Smiley that day on the bus. Under that two-year confinement to his home, he advanced the gospel. He shared the message of salvation through Jesus Christ to the whole imperial guard, now, those are just the guys that happened to be there within arm's reach, like the bus driver. 
Now look at the result. When the other Christians heard about all this, they became confident in the Lord and bold, speaking the word without fear. Okay, so it took about 30 seconds for word to spread around the bus that John Smiley was up in the front ministering to the bus driver. I want you to imagine how it made the rest of us feel. Now, for me, to be honest, it started as conviction. I was thinking, oh, man, why didn't I think of that? But pretty soon, conviction gave rise to motivation. I remember coming to this realization that, wow, okay, I guess the mission trip starts now, like on the bus. Okay, let's do it. And then, motivation gave rise to action, kind of like it did with the people who were observing Paul's ministry in prison. They became bold and confident in teaching about Jesus Christ. Now, I don't remember exactly what happened next on the bus, but I think a number of us started praying individually in our seats for that conversation that was happening at the front of the bus. Right now, we're in the middle of a global pandemic, and we're all confined to our homes. You can call it the bus, you can call it house arrest, call it what you want, but it feels like an intermediate state, an in-between time for us with productive life and ministry behind us. You remember the good old days when we used to be allowed to get together physically? And then we long for this future date when we'll be able to get together physically again, and then we'll be able to be productive in ministry. And oh, those are going to be the good days, right? As soon as that happens, it's going to be like, game on, unpause. But I want to challenge us to think of it differently. The time for ministry is now, right here in our homes and wherever our virtual tools can take us, Zoom and Hangouts and Facebook, YouTube. In fact, If you're listening to this right now, and you've heard before the truth about Jesus Christ, but you've never responded to his call, the time to respond is now, not some future optimal date. What if the people who need to hear the message of Jesus Christ the most are right here in front of us, right here among us in our confinement, just like that driver who was sitting seats, six seats in front of me on the bus. Let's all have the gospel ready on our lips. Not even in this unique time, but especially in this unique time. Just like those brothers and sisters who were inspired by Paul's ministry in prison, let's become confident in the Lord and bold Speaking the word without fear.